in this lecture we will be discussing uh, on the transitive closure of a relation. Suppose R is a relation on a on a set A, then we uh, call uh, the transitive closure of R another relation which we denote by R plus such that R is transitive, R contains sorry R plus is transitive, R is contained in R plus and R plus is the smallest transitive relation containing R. So, there are three points to be remembered R plus must be transitive. second point to remember is R is a subset of R plus and the third point to remember is that if T is a transitive relation on A such that R is a subset of T which in turn is a subset of R plus, then T equal to R plus. If for R plus the above three conditions hold then R plus is said to be the transitive closure of R. Now, our problem here is to find out a way of computing R plus from R. We start by checking the powers of R that is R composed by itself. So, we consider R and then we define R square which is also written as R composition R as A R square B if and only if there exists A 1 belonging to A such that A related to A 1 and A 1 related to 
b. In this way, we can extend the uh, this idea to r raised to the power some k. So, we define r raised to the power k which is essentially r composition and so on r composition and composition r and this whole thing is k times all right as a r raised to the power k b if and only if there exists a sequence of elements of a a 1 up to a k minus 1 all inside a such that a r a 1, a 1 r a 2, so on up to a k minus 1 r a, uh, here it is b. So, the last element here is a k minus 1 r b all right. Now, the result that we are going to prove here is r plus that is a transitive closure r plus that is the transitive closure of r is same as r union r square union and so on up to r k, but we do not stop here we keep on going. So, I just keep on taking powers of r and add in the union and the totality that we will we get is r plus that is what we claim here. So, I can in a compact notation write this is equal to k equal to 1 to infinity r raised to the power k. Now, the question is that where is the proof and that is exactly that we are going to do now. We will write for the time being r prime as the union k equal to 1 to infinity r raised to the power k and we will prove that r prime is indeed the transitive closure of r. So, for to do that first of all we have to prove that r prime is a transitive relation 1. Suppose A R prime B and B R prime C for some A B C belonging to capital A. This means that there exists i comma j belonging to uh, the set of positive integers such that a 
a r raised to the power i b and b r raised to the power j c. This is because r prime is union of our all r raised to the power k's and therefore, if a is r prime b then uh, of course, there is some element i for which uh, a, uh, a is r raised to the power i b and similarly for b, uh, b and c. Now, by definition of the power of relations what we have here is that there exists a 1 up to a i minus 1 and b 1 up to b j minus 1 all belonging to a such that all right we have a chain starting from a a related to a 1 a 1 related to a 2 and we proceed in this way to a i minus 1 related to b, but what happens here that the chain does not stop here we can pick up from b which is related to b 1 and b 1 related to b 2 and so on and ultimately we come to b j minus 1 related to c. And therefore, if we combine this whole chain then we will get a related to r raised to the power i plus j c, but this means that a union k equal to 1 to infinity r raised to the power k c, which in turn means that a r dash c. Thus, at least we have proved that r prime is transitive. The second point that we have to prove is somewhat easy because we have to prove that r is a subset of r prime and that is true because after all r prime is union of r and other powers of r. Therefore, uh, it is easy to check that r is a subset of r prime. So, I will write here that it is easy to check. Next, we move on to prove probably the most difficult part of the proof that is r prime is the smallest transitive relation containing r. We write it as the point 3. Now, so let us think that how to prove this fact. So, I would like to prove that r prime is the smallest transitive relation containing r that means I have to prove that there is no relation containing r which is transitive and properly contained in r prime. So, let us suppose that we have a relation which is which let us denote by t and which is sandwiched in between r and up r prime. So, here suppose t is a transitive relation
such that R is a subset of T which in turn is a subset of R prime. What we will prove is that if such a thing happens then T is forced to be equal to R prime and that proves that uh, there can be no proper subset of uh, R prime which contains R and transitive at the same time. Now, to do this we have to prove that T equal to R prime and that, uh, that means uh, set theoretically T is a subset of R prime and R prime is also a subset of T. Now, this part of the chain already tells us that T is a subset of R prime. So, there is nothing to prove. So, we have to prove the other way around that R prime is a subset of T. To do that we have to start with an element of R prime. Now, suppose we have an element of R prime we denote it by A B. Well, uh, technically we can write A B belongs to R prime which essentially means that A is R prime B right and this means remembering that R prime is nothing but k starting from 1 to infinity R raised to the power k alright. So, since A B belongs to R prime that therefore, A B has to be in some R raised to the power i for some positive i. So, therefore, I can write A R raised to the power i B where i belongs to z to the power plus that is positive integer and since a r to the a is r to the power i b we will have i minus 1 elements from a such that we can build a chain of relations as we have seen before. So, this implies that there exists a 1 a 2 so on up to a i minus 1 all belonging to a such that a r a 1 a 1 r a 2 we proceed like this and then at the end we have a i minus 1 r b. Now, in the next step we realize that by our assumption we have r a subset of t. Since r is a subset of t alright, since r is a subset of t if we have two elements related through r then they are also related to t. So, therefore, we can just change it to a t a 1 a 1 t a 2 and we proceed like this and ultimately we will have a i minus 1 t b. Now, we know something more about t we know that T is transitive. So, T is transitive. Why T is transitive? Because we have assumed it to be so. So, since T is transitive what we realize is that we can kind of 
collapse this chain here to just a t b why because if you consider these two points in the chain since t is transitive we can write a t a 2 the next element will be a 2 t a 3 and if well there is a next element to this then it will be a 3 t a 4 and ultimately we will arrive at a i minus 1 t b, but then I can collapse it again we can combine these two to write a t a 3 and proceed and ultimately get a i minus 1 t b this is all because t is transitive and therefore, at the end we will end up with a t b, but what does it mean? This means that the pair a comma b is an element of t and therefore, we now check the whole chain of arguments we started with assuming that the ordered pair a b belongs to r prime and we end up by deriving that the ordered pair a b belongs to t this means that r prime is a subset of t. Now, we check that we have already observed that t is a subset of r prime and that is by the definition and we have derived that r prime is a subset of t all by using the property that t contains r t is transitive and t is inside r prime. Therefore, we can write that t is equal to r prime and this proves that r prime is the transitive closure of r. Now, as we have uh, started by writing transitive closure of a relation by r to the power plus, therefore, we can write in symbols that r prime is equal to r to the power plus. So, that is to say again the same thing that r prime is the transitive closure of r. Now, we will see that this whole thing becomes uh, simpler if our underlying set is a finite set. We need to simplify this uh, whole scenario because as we have seen that okay, if you give me a relation r then r plus is a union of a infinite sequence of elements uh, namely r union r square union and so on some may be r to the power k and so on which we are writing as uh, union k 
uh, from 1 to infinity r to the power k. Well, okay, theoretically we have proved this, but it is, uh, it is uh, not uh, necessarily true that we will be able to complete the computation in general because we have a we have to compute union of infinitely many elements. Therefore, uh, we need something simpler and we would like to have something simpler for at least finite cases and indeed we have uh, a much simpler result when the set A contains only n element which we will write as A 1 a 2 up to a n. Okay. So, by putting A within two vertical lines, we denote the number of elements of A and in this case it is n. What we will show first is that uh, suppose uh, two elements in A, let us denote them by A, A and B are related by some r to the power i of B, then we will as we have seen before have a chain of relations. So, to say connecting A to B. So, we will have elements like a 1 up to a, I will rather change the definition, uh, change the notation over here because I am writing the elements of a as a 1, a 2 and all these things. So, what I will be doing instead is that I will say that suppose there we, we, we when we have got a r raised to the power i b then we have some b 1 dot 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 b i minus 1 belonging to a such that A R B one B B one R B two up to B I minus one R B. Here we have to remember few things that this B I's has nothing to do with the uh, ordering A I's and I may be much larger than N. So and another thing that we have to note over here that I have not told that B i's are distinct, they may repeat. So, I have essentially a sequence of elements B 1, B 2 up to B i minus 1, where there may be repetitions. And we may call it the sequence of internal uh, points. Or the sequence of interior points. So, I will be calling them sequence of interior points.
all right now a an element from the sequence let us say bj will be coin, uh, will be called interior point and this whole chain starting from a and one after another a uh, a sequence of uh, alternatively r and some b i this whole chain is called a path from a to b path from a to b in we can call it in a with respect to the relation r so i can write it i will just say it's a path from a to b if we assume that we know a and we know r now there is a there is an important uh, parameter associated to this path which is called the length of this path is simply i why i because we see that this one we have got one then two and like this so we will have i number of places where we are using the relation uh, if we have i minus 1 interior points please note again that these interior points need not be distinct if we think in terms of digraph this is very intuitive what we have here essentially a point a and a point b uh, in a or in the set of vertices when we are looking at this whole uh, setup as as digraphs then we have a and b and then we have uh, some let us say b1 and a relation uh, a related to b1 means that we have a directed path then we again have something else b2 then we have b3 then we have let us say b4 but this is where what i am coming to that this uh, this interior points need not be distinct so from b4 we may go back again to b2 but then this b2 is also b5 and from b5 we will go go to b6 and similarly we will proceed till we get to b from b i minus 1 and the number of links that we have used is essentially the length of the path now what we will notice here that if along the path a vertex or an element or a point of a is repeated like in this portion b2 to b5 we can essentially cut this loop out and in the process reduce the length of the path we can do this more systematically uh, like here please see that i am first writing the path this is a and this is a r b1 then a r sorry 
let me remove this right and then we have B 1 R B 2. Let us suppose we come to some B L minus 1 R B L and then B L R B L plus 1. Again we proceed then at some point we get another element let us say call it B k minus 1 R B k and then we have B k R B k plus 1 and we proceed again till we reach the end of the path which is B i minus 1 R and the last one is B. We have a path like this and suppose B L is equal to B k, L is strictly less than k. Then as we have seen in the diagram, uh, but in this case more formally we can uh, write a path from A to B as A starting from B 1 and so on till we reach B L minus 1 R and here instead of B L I can just write B K. The reason is that B L and B K are same and then continue in the same sequence to get B K B K plus 1 and so on up to B i minus 1 R B right. We get this. Now of course, this is a path from A to B of length i. We have obtained another path from a to b of length strictly less than i because l is strictly less than k and well what we have done is that we have cut out two uh, uh, two equal in interior points just merged them and then gone on with our path. Now we can keep on doing this process and at the end we will have a path which does not have any repeated interior points. That means a path such that all interior points are distinct. So, continuing in this way we can arrive at a path from a to b such that all interior points are distinct. Now let us go back to the set on which we are considering the 
relation this set has got only n elements a 1 up to a n and uh, so if we take any two points in a if they are connected by a path we can we know that we have already seen that we can and we can always do that connect a and b through a path where interior points are distinct but these interior points are going to come from the set a itself and nowhere else therefore if a and b are different and both are in a the number of possible interior points that we can get is n minus 2 so any path can be reduced to a path containing n minus 2 distinct elements of a if a and b are not equal therefore uh, the length of the path will be n minus 1 suppose a and b are equal then we are left with n minus 1 elements of a and therefore at most we can have a path with n minus 1 distinct interior points in fact it will be a loop starting from a, a point of a and going through the points of capital a and go back to the original point so the length of this path will be n so in this case if we have two elements if they are at all related by some r raised to the power i they are related uh, by some r raised to the power j where j is strictly less than or equal to n and greater than or equal to 1 therefore uh, r plus which is union k equal to 1 to infinity r raised to the power k is simply the union of a finite uh, set of relations this now we can do computation with this suppose we have to find out the matrix corresponding to the relation r plus then it will be the matrix corresponding to the relation r union r square union and so on up to r raised to the power n which in turn is the matrix m r or the matrix m r square and so on up to the matrix m r raised to the power n which in turn is the matrix m r or the matrix m r square the matrix m r raised to the power n where this m r raised to the power i will mean m r m r and so on up to m r i times where this particular operation is the operation of binary matrices that we have discussed before which corresponds to the composition of the relations this we have uh, covered in previous lecture 
So, we have this situation. Now, we can start checking an example. Yeah. So, let us take a set and a relation. So, now my set A is A, B, C, D and E and the relation R is given by A A a B B C C D C E and D E. Our problem is to find R plus in the first step we construct m r. Now, if we check carefully we will see that m r is 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 and the last row is all 0 like this. This we have to find out by finding the matrix corresponding to R that we have uh, discussed in a previous lecture. Now, we keep on considering the powers of this relation where m r square is nothing but m r multiplied by m r with a special rule that we have discussed before and that will give us 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 and 0 0 0 0 0 along with 0 0 0 0 0. So, this so I will request you to check all the calculations and I will tell you one way of doing this when we are trying to compute m r square which is m r product m r. What we can do is that we can just take matrix multiplication as such and then at each entry we have to check that whether the entry is 0 or non 0. If the entry is 0 keep it as 0, if the entry is non 0 change it to 1 and then you will get a matrix like this. And if we try the same rule with m r cube, we will get 1 1 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 and rest of the rows all zeros and in exactly the same way multiplying m r three ta uh, four times by using the same product we will get m r to the power 4 which is 1 1 1 1 1 and rest of the rows are zeros all right and then lastly 
we have m r to the power 5 which is again same as m r to the power 4 all right and then our job will be to take the union of all these relations and in the matrix form it will be m r plus is equal to m r or m r square or m r cube or m r to the power 4 or m r to the power 5 and this if we check carefully is 1 1 1 1 1 0 0 1 1 1 then 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 and the last row is 0 0 up to 0 all zeros. So, this is the matrix corresponding to m r plus then we have to construct the relation uh, corresponding to this matrix for that again we will use whatever we have studied before. We remember that in all these cases we have not tampered with the ordering of A. Therefore, uh, these columns are labeled by A, B, C, D, E and the rows are labeled by A, B, C, D, E. Therefore, we see that the entry corresponding to A A gives 1. So, it is in the relation. So, A A is in the relation. A B is also in the relation. A C is also in the relation. A D is in the relation. A E is in the relation. We come to the second row where we have B, we see that B A the corresponding entry is 0. So, it is not in the relation, B B is not in relation, but B C is in the relation. So, we will write B comma C, then we write B comma D, we write B comma E. Then we come to the third row, C A is not in the relation, C B is not in the relation, C C is not in the relation, but it starts from C D. C D and C E are in the relation. So, we write C D, C E and lastly we see that D E is in the relation and there is no other element in the relation. So, ultimately we have R plus as a set and set it is a subset of A Cartesian product A. Now, the problem with this technique is that we have to do lot of work as we have seen that each time we have to keep on multiplying m r with whatever we have obtained before. What we are doing is probably little less complicated than matrix multiplication, but it is ultimately, ultimately the same in terms of uh, the number of number of elements that we have to compare in the worst possible case. Therefore, 
we would like to know whether we can do it in a faster uh, way. And indeed, there is an algorithm called Watschel's algorithm which does it in a much more faster and convenient way. This algorithm we will study in the next lecture. For today, this is the end. Thank you.